Hello everybody and welcome to Attaché, the show that gets you in, out, and around some of the world's greatest cities. My name is Alex Hunter and I'll be your Sherpa on this international adventure. And we start our journey here today in London, England. So I know what you're thinking, Alex, aren't you a little old to be a YouTuber? Well, to those of you that doubt my ability to participate in the YouTube generation, I say this to you. YOLO. Isn't that what they say? YouTube gets YOLO, isn't that what they say? Seriously, it's like they spent the last five years making up words. I don't even know what they're talking about anymore. Chances are if you travel for business, you've been either through or to London. It's a global financial capital and a major transit hub for those people getting into Europe. London has six, count them, six international airports. But some of them are so far outside of the city, they might as well be in China. So we're gonna focus on the two big boys, Gatwick to the south and Heathrow to the west. Both airports are big, ugly, and located a long way out of town. So it's really important to plan your transfer wisely. But let me tell you this right now, do not take a taxi. Got that? Write that down. Heathrow is 14 miles outside of town. Gatwick is a whopping 30 miles outside of town. And unlike cities like New York, where there's a set fare from the airport into town, London doesn't have that, so it can end up costing you a lot of money. The good news is there's cheaper and faster options to get into the city. Heathrow is connected to central London by the Tube, a regular train service and an express train service. The underground, the Tube is great, but it's really slow, over an hour to get into town. The express service is fast, only 15 minutes, but it is absurdly expensive. Your best bet is the Heathrow Connect, only slightly slower than the express service, but over half the cost. They both leave from the same platform at Heathrow Airport, and they both come in here to Paddington Station in central London. Heathrow Connect is by far your best way to get into town. God damn it! <laughs> it's the same situation with Gatwick Airport, except without the tube connection. There's an express train service and a regular train service. Same situation, avoid the express. It's only a few minutes faster and criminally expensive. Look for the regular train service as you walk out of the terminal. That's your best way of getting into town from Gatwick Airport. London has really solid public transport options with tubes, trains, taxis, trams, light railways, and even river boats. The first thing you're gonna wanna get is one of these, an Oyster card. It's London's stored value system and it works on almost every form of transport in the city. And because it's a simple tap in, tap out system, you're not gonna be that guy that's fumbling with a paper ticket at the turnstile in the middle of rush hour. The London Transport Network is expansive, clean, and generally very well run. Apps like Google Maps and the local darling City Mapper will help you get from point to point quickly and easily. And those apps are worthwhile using because while the Tube Map is a work of cartographic genius, it can sometimes be a little bit misleading. Check this out. We're at Bayswater Station right here. Look at Queensway. Different line. Looks like it's a long way away. Nope. It's actually right there. And that's where this map can be sometimes a little bit misleading. Those apps will solve problems like that for you a lot faster. One final tip for riding the tube in England, always stand on the right. Nothing will incur the silent wrath of a Londoner faster than standing on the left. Always on the right, you've been warned. So a couple of things to remember about London taxis. Uh, while a lot more of them are taking credit card, the vast majority still are cash only, so make sure you've got enough to cover your fare before you get into the cab. Can I ask you a question? You know when people hail a cab and they almost always come to the passenger window to tell you, why do they do that? You know, somebody might want to go somewhere outside the six mile radius, even further than that, and the driver might, doesn't, doesn't necessarily have to accept the defense. We learned something today. Also, when you hail a cab and it pulls over, go to the passenger window and talk to the cabbie before you get in to discuss where you're going, how long it will take, etc., etc. I've just learned why that happens, and it's because there's a six mile radius from Charing Cross uh, that dictates fare and other things. So it's common courtesy to talk about your destination before you get into the cab. No one knows London better than a London cabbie. In fact, they have to go through the most extraordinary certification process called the knowledge, which ensures that they can figure out the best route between any two points in London without ever having to look at a map. The study process takes years and not, hardly anyone ever passes it on their first go, but it means that if you need to get anywhere in London, these guys are the guys to do it. We got a large map of London and uh, the person calls out a route and you have to do that, uh, name every street from beginning to end 
in the most direct way. And if you say road instead of a street, they'll deduct the point. Let's get this in the open right now. London is not a cheap city. But if you know where to look and what to expect, you can avoid that awkward conversation when you get back to the office about that latest expense report you submitted. The currency here is officially the pound sterling, but ordinarily referred to as the pound, casually referred to as a quid. Always singular, one quid, five quid, 20 quid, never quids. The pound is a decimal-based currency. There's 100 pence or P in a pound. Again, always singular, 10 P, 50 P, 75 P. Right now, the pound converts to about $1.60 US, $1.80 Australian, and about 1.3 euros. A cup of coffee will cost you around two pounds. A pint of beer will cost you around four pounds. And the most reliable indicator of a nation's cost, the good old Big Mac, will cost you two pounds and 89p, around $4.60. And speaking of Big Macs, don't forget to check out our food segment where you can discover the wackiness that awaits you at a London McDonald's. I'll give you a hint, it's terrifying. Greg, it's awful. So what about tipping in London? Well, I'm glad you asked because it's complicated. In the past, tipping was a rarity. It basically never really happened. But in the last few years, it started to happen more and more. In places that it catered to tourists, a discretionary service charge is sometimes added to the bill, so keep an eye out for that. Other times, it's added as part of the payment process. So if you feel like tipping, how much should you tip? In a restaurant, 10 to 15% is considered generous and indicates that you were happy with the service and with the meal. In a cab, it's cool to round up the fare, but that's really as far as you need to go. One quick thing on paying for stuff. While the US is stuck in the Stone Age, like the rest of the modern world, the UK has widely adopted the chip and pin card. Instead of swiping and signing, all you do is put your card in the machine, punch in your pin number, and you're done. No signing, no signatures, no paper. You'll also notice they're not taking my card away, so it can't be copied and used to fund weapons and supplies for small militias in Central America. Now these machines can accommodate your antiquated chipless card, but it will occasionally confound the occasional member of the service industry, so you'll need to explain that your card doesn't have a chip and needs to be swiped. So that's the attaché guide to London. If you've been here before and feel like we've missed something, or you're a Londoner and feel like there's something that every visitor to this great city needs to know, make sure you leave it in the comments below. Until next time, 